What is going on everyone? My name is Colin. This is the Pokey Office. Thank you for being here. Today's video we're looking at my top picks for April 2023 investing in Pokemon Sealed product. Uh, I got a couple spicy takes for you. Couple no-brainers to be honest with you. Uh, some stuff that I'm doing. We also talked about last video about this scandal that's been rummaging through Pokemon where people have been stealing the best cards of Fusion Strike. I think it's happened in Evolving Skies as well. So that might uh, factor into today's video. And last thing I gotta tell you before we get to the data is that I am just inching ever closer to a thousand subscribers, which is absolutely epic. Thank you so much, first of all, for all of you who have subscribed. If you haven't, do me a solid and do it because I'm like literally less than 10 away as I'm recording this. And once I hit a thousand, the next videos, I'm going to be giving away an Evolving Skies Elite Trainer Box um, So to one lucky subscriber. So stay tuned. It's probably going to be the three videos next week where I'm going to give you the opportunity to win that Elite Trainer Box. Yeah, with that being said, let's get into my top picks for April 2023 investing, and I'll see you on the flip side. Okay, so number one on my list is the Arceus V-Star Ultra Premium Collection, uh, exclusive to GameStop, and the price is still online, $99.99. On TCG Player, it has it listed at $110.83, but I've heard from you, a few of the comments were talking about this product and I thought it was a great idea to include it on this video so um, props to you for naming it I can't remember who said it exactly but full credit is where it's due uh, from the comments is where I got this from uh, this is a great product this comes with four lost origin four astral radiance booster packs four brilliant stars two evolving skies one vivid voltage plus it's got those metal cards of the Arceus V and I think the RCS V-Star, well, it must be because it's called RCS V-Star uh, UPC. And I mean, it's a great price. I think that Pokemon potentially overprinted these because they're still sitting in GameStops today. So really what the comment said and what I believe to be true as well is pretty soon I wouldn't, exp I wouldn't be surprised if these were actually to go on sale at GameStop to make way for some new stuff to come out. Plus, you're getting 15 packs, plus you're getting the metal cards. Like, there's a lot of value here. You get the playmat, which also looks pretty cool. Uh, if you need to see more of it, it's one of my really early videos, so I'm not nearly as good on camera, but you can check it out in the right-hand corner of the screen here as a suggested video. Uh, but a really cool box. I think this is going to be something... Especially with these packs that are inside, I could see it going up in value, especially as Sword and Shield is on the way out now with uh, the new Scarlet and Violet stuff coming out. Next up, I think Crown Zenith is going to be a total banger of a set moving forward. Lots like uh, Hidden Fates to me is how this is going to compare. I actually did a comparison whether Crown Zenith is more like Evolving Skies or more like Hidden Fates. I think it's more like Hidden Fates. So I could see Crown Zenith ETBs going uh, big time once this set is out of print. I think there's still another, let's say, month and a half worth of Crown Zenith release window because it's coming out with those premium figures, uh, Zamazenta and Zacian uh, boxes. But I think there might be another round of the ETBs. I'm not 100% sure, but I wouldn't be surprised just because they're so popular. And you can still pick them up for MSRP, 60 bucks, get you 10 packs of Crown Zenith. And honestly, every time I open Crown Zenith, it's so fun. There's so many good cards. I actually created a slide to check this out. These are just the top 10 cards value-wise, but there's way more good ones. Like I'm missing the Entai, the Raikou, um, the Deoxys VMAX. Like there's tons of amazing cards here, but look at this. You got the Giratina V-Star gold card, Arceus V-Star, the Palkia V-Star, the Dialga V-Star. Then you have that amazing Mewtwo V-Star card, Fighting the Charizard. Then you have Leafeon and Glaceon. And then you have Darkrai and Hisuian Zororark. And then you got the Spacoon. All of the artworks in these packs are just like legendary, in my opinion. So I think Crown Zenith could be a set that you should stock up on now, either to rip open in the future because it's so fun or to actually invest. Once these go out of print, I think these are gonna be really tough to find for good price because they're just, people love this set so much. 
and for good reason. Like it's just, it's epic. There's so many good cards. I love everything about this set. It's one of my favorite ones for sure. Next up, I'd be hard pressed not to include this just because the price makes this so good of a purchase right now. The Charizard UPC, it was in my March 2023 investing video as well. But um, I actually went back and watched the video where I opened one of these back on the channel. This was even before I opened the RCS Beastar UPC. So really bad video quality, but uh, forgive me because I was learning. Uh, still am. <laughs> um, so this one in my box came with two Lost Origin booster packs, three Astro Radiance, three Brilliant Stars, three Evolving Skies, three Fusion Strike, one Vivid Voltage, one Darkness Ablaze. That was a round one print wave where all of the promo cards were really off center. I think they fixed that error a little bit in the wave two of print. And I think there might be a difference in the packs of cards you get, but I'm not 100% sure. And I didn't research it all that much because I don't really care. I still think that this is an amazing value for uh, this UPC. You get the playmat, which is on my table right now. It looks awesome. You get the metal dice and all that kind of fun stuff. But the real ticket is these uh, packs inside which is Epic, plus the three promo cards, which are still selling for like in the realm of $30 to $40 for the three of them. So you're getting a ton of value here. And I mean, there's just packs here that are getting harder to find. You, like you got three Evolving Skies. Um, you got the Vivid Voltage and the Darkness Ablaze. And over time, you can get these UPCs super cheap right now. And you get a ton of variety in Sword and Shield packs for a really good price. And sooner or later, people are gonna keep ripping into these, keep opening them. So pick them up while they're still in stores at like a discounted price. Cause this is less than MSRP, it's insane. Like Pokemon just printed way too many of these. And so I, I mean, we may as well take advantage of it in my opinion. Okay, next up, we got the Vivid Voltage Booster Box. The reason I included this is because number one, this booster box is starting to go up in value. We saw it last month too when I included it, but it actually is on the rise. Over the last three months, it's up 9.5%, which isn't insanely huge, but it's still pretty good. So sitting like actually at the MSRP price, like you can't get it for cheaper than that anymore from what I've seen. And I think that that Chunkachu rainbow card, the Pikachu VMAX is gonna be a banger for a long time. People love Pikachu probably the most iconic Pokemon out there because of the TV show. And I mean, it's a, the rainbow version of it. It's an expensive card. I think people are going to continue to want to chase that card well into the future. All you need, in my opinion, is one big card per set where it's going to create that like anticipation and the price to increase on a booster box because you have 36 chances at pulling that card. Same thing, uh, Battle Styles is on the up and up, so I included it here. It was always the cheapest booster box for a long, long time, and it still is. You can still get it. The market price right now is $115.36, but it's up 8.7%. And it really does have a lot of cool cards. It has the Tyranitar V Alt Art. It has the Urshifu, like the Single Strike Urshifu, the Rapid Strike Urshifu, both the VMAX and the V all versions of the alternate artworks um you have the empoleon and uh i'm missing one of the alters i can't think of it right off the top of my head but there is some cool cards in the set the pull rates aren't great but it's still like that kind of middle tier maybe even the lower tier even though i don't know why because that sleepy tyranitar v alt art is absolutely amazing and i think that as people uh, carry on over time, that battle styles actually might have some sway to it. That's my opinion. I don't know. Tell me what you think below in the comments. Okay, we're moving on. Chilling Rain. This is a set I've been really big on ever since I started the channel. I think it's epic. The booster box actually has kind of leveled off at that $140 mark over the last like month, two months, uh, which is a good thing. But over the last three months, it's still up 8.3% because it started at $129.45. But Chilling Rain is one of these ones where I think moving forward well into the future, once all of Sword and Shield is out of print, I think that Chilling Rain is going to be one where people look back upon it and are like, holy crap, this was an amazing set. And here's why. Look at all these cards. 
the cheapest one. I didn't put the prices on them. I probably should have. So sorry about that. But the cheapest one is the Slow King V Alt Art, and it's worth $35. So you have 10 cards above $35, including the Blaziken V Max, which is like a $180 card, the Galarian Moltres V, which is a $140 card, the Snorlax, which is close to a hundred. I think it's like in the $85 to $90 range right now. Then you have the Zorora V, the Galarian Zapdos, you've got the Galarian Articuno. Then you have the Calyrex, uh, Ice Rider, and Shadow Rider variants of the VMAX cards. Then you have the Rapidash, V Alt Art. There's so many Alt Arts in this set. The pull rates are, are pretty hard, um, even though I've had pretty good luck with this set, to be honest with you, pulling the Moltres and the Snorlax, which is absolutely epic. Hoping to get those ones graded soon. But that's a side note. I think Chilling Rain just has so much to offer in terms of huge cards that are awesome to pull. Uh, that a booster box is not a bad idea. Hey, before we get to my spicy pick, uh, just want to ask you one more time, please subscribe to the channel, bell notifications on, hit that like button, and uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you are thinking, what you're investing in this month, what you're picking up. Maybe you disagree with some of my picks. Uh, just let me know. I want to hear your comments. I read them all for sure, and I comment on all of them as well. So I appreciate you all for watching. Let's get back to the data. Okay, I got three more things for you. This one, Scarlet and Violet. I just think now is a good time to get into it. Uh, it's the first set of a new era of Pokemon. You can still get it for relatively cheap because they're available readily. And looking back at Sword and Shield base set, like those booster boxes are going for quite a bit. It's uh, closing in on like the $250 to $300 mark right now. I can't uh, remember exactly what it is, but it's quite a bit. So like double... And that's what, three, three and a half years old. So if you buy some of these, hold for three and a half years, I wouldn't be surprised that you are doubling your money in three years. Uh, same thing with the new set coming out in June, Paldea Evolved. Uh, right now, you can get pre-orders in for like $115. So I have my pre-orders in for Paldea Evolved. Uh, and I don't think it's a bad idea for you to either just... They're readily available right now, so get them while they're hot. If you want them at the lowest prices, I think that you can find them at probably the lowest prices right now while they are readily available and while those pre-orders are still happening. So that's my opinion. Let me know what you think. Maybe you like to wait and see how these sets are. I'm trying to buy a new booster box of every new set moving forward, so definitely I'm getting my pre-orders in on these. Okay, my last take. Fusion Strike. The reason I put this on here is, well, first, there's some good cards in Fusion Strike, like the Espeon VMAX, the Gengar VMAX, the Mew VMAX. Uh, but second, um, it's also going up. It's up 9.1% over the last three months. But here's the main reason. I talked about it in my previous video this week. It's this huge scandal in Pokemon with people stealing Pokemon cards. Look at these fat stacks of Gengar VMAX Altarts, the Espeon VMAX Altarts, the Inteleon uh, Altarts, the Rainbow Cards, like, holy cow, this is insane. I think it's been verified. It's been all over the Pokemon Facebook sites and the news lately. I mean, not the real news, but just the Pokemon news. Um, my personal opinion, so take this with a grain of salt, because it's just an opinion, not uh, financial advice or nothing like that. But I think this is actually going to make prices go up, because... People are going to see, oh, wow, there's like less and less of these cards. So maybe I need to get them while they are available to me at the market price currently before they go way, way up. Because now we know, or at least we presume that the pull rates are actually crappier because people stole the big hits of Fusion Strike. So that's just my take. Might be a spicy one. Let me know in the comments below. I got uh, some packs to open up of Scarlet and Violet base set. See if we can still keep ripping into some of those top tens like last week. So go check that video out too after this one. But I'll see you on the flip side. Okay, okay. We got 10 packs of Scarlet and Violet. Uh, my last time opening Scarlet and Violet. Holy cow, was it terrible. Uh, some of my worst pull rates I've ever had. I think I had one pull out of 13 packs, which is yikes. Um, so time to rectify that. Uh, definitely hoping to have more than that. Otherwise, maybe I'm cursed with Scarlet and Violet base set. 
I really hope not, but 0 for 1. All right, all right, all right. This is coming out of a new booster box that I just opened. Um, so these 10 packs are the first 10 off the right hand side of the booster box. Um, I didn't mix them up, so these are just coming straight out of the box. Um, I had talked to you guys last time, I think it was my last video actually, about whether or not it's better to get booster boxes or just out of the random like single packs or the three pack blisters or the sleeve blister packs. Like, it's always a gamble, but at the booster box level, like you're kind of expecting that eight to 14 hits. So it feels like kind of consistent, like you kind of know that you're gonna get some hits. Whereas sleeved packs, like you never know, you could hit gold or you could hit nothing. Uh, speaking of hitting nothing, 0 4 3 on uh, this booster box so far. Um, in different news, what do you guys think of my takes on this video? I have a couple Charizard UPCs uh, sitting in storage. I also have two of the Arceus UPCs, I believe, sitting in storage. Rare Candy Gold! Let's go, baby! Holy, that came out of nowhere. Wow, can this be a double banger pack? No, it cannot, but that is nice. Very nice card, very nice hit. That is one of the, uh, I think it's in the top 15 cards of the set, so sick. Man, I was not expecting that. I was just in the zone talking to the camera. Uh, holy, well, immediately better than the last time I opened Scarlet and Violet, so thank God for that. Um, and I don't even remember what I was saying, but I think moving on to a different conversation. Like, I think Chilling Rain is gonna be one of those sets that people are going to want to crack into long after. As we pull a Mabostiff, that's the guy who's like, I think it's Arvin in the game where you have, he has the dog that's sick and then every time you beat one of the, man, I'm choking on my words here. Every time you beat one of like the Pokemon, he makes a sandwich and the dog feels a little bit better. So, very nice card. Um, that is just an illustration rare, I believe it's called. And uh, nothing. Sick, two hits in a row, let's go, baby. That is nice. How would you pronounce this? Let me know in the comments. Mabostiff? Mabostiff? I think it's Mabostiff, I don't know. I don't know, pretty cool looking card, actually. Um, I often find that Scarlet and Violet is like, on the pictures online, doesn't really do it justice. They're really dark on the pictures and then actually in person, like just take a look at this real quick. It's actually like, the colors on this card are really, really nice. I like it a lot. Uh, I think I pulled the energy already, so here we go. Uh, very nice, two in a row. Finally getting some damage out of Scarlet and Violet here. Can we do three in a row? You never know. Karide on EX, okay. Technically, that is three in a row. Nice. Pulled this one quite a few times already, actually. Um, no complaints here, though. All the hits just keep on coming. And seems to be, like, more often than not, Scarlet and Violet base set has really good pull rates from what I've been hearing about. So uh, maybe my last 13-pack opening was just terrible luck. I have no idea. But let's keep it going. Torquo. Nimona, Cyclazar, is it Cyclazar or Cyclazar? I think it's like Bicycle, so Cyclazar. Gotta learn all these new Pokemon, all the new pronunciations. It's not a strong suit of mine. So taking you back, I used to be in the Canadian Air Force. In uh, I was an air traffic controller, and the hardest part learning that job for me was all of the talking. Like, I just had a terrible time trying to get all the words on my mouth. So, the fact that I'm here talking to you over video, talking to a camera, so that you can hear me later on, and getting all the words out, like, I've made some progress, for sure. So, if you're still here watching, I appreciate you, first of all. And hopefully you don't mind that I stumble on my words sometimes, because that's just, that's just me calling. Halucha, come on baby, Karidon. Okay, we're on our last pack. We've had three hits out of uh, ten, nine packs so far. 
So currently hitting at one for three, and we hit a gold card, which is not too shabby. I think it's like a $10 card if I reckon correctly. Uh, hopefully we can hit one more time. That would be nice. Shroomish. Klefki, last card in three, two, one. King Gambit, nada. Okay, quick overview here. Uh, still don't know how to pronounce this dude. Mabastiff, I think is what we're gonna call it. Then we got the Coridon EX, and we did pull a rare candy. That is the hyper rare card, gold card. Pretty sick. That's gonna do it for me at the Pokey Office. Appreciate you watching. If you haven't yet, make sure you're subscribed with, to the channel with bell notifications on. Hit that like button for me and leave a comment, whatever you wanna say. I wanna read it and I wanna to respond to you. Appreciate you all and until next time, peace.